Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll be discussing the various clinicals of the arches of the foot. So we've already talked that the arches of the foot are responsible for preventing your foot from being flat, helping the foot to walk on uneven ground, also acting as a shock absorber and protecting your foot structures from getting compressed. So obviously the clinical, the first clinical that will arise in the arches of the foot will be related to the fact that arches are gone. So if the arches are gone, that term is known as the pes planus. In a person who does not have arches, the person will have a flat foot. It is known as the pes planus. So if this is a normal footprint of any individual who has normal arches, for the flat foot, the person will literally have his entire foot footprint. All right. The complications of flat foot are that all the functions of the arches of the foot that they were performing will not be performed because now the foot is flat. So there will be compression of the nerve that lies under the sole that will cause metatarsalgia. What is metatarsalgia? Pain in the metatarsal. Anything related to algia means pain. So metatarsals will undergo a lot of pain. These people will complain of pain. And the way they will walk, they will walk in a shuffling gait meaning their walking style will have changed because of their foot because your arches are responsible for walking in a normal way apart from that shock absorption function will also be lost now let's talk about if these arches get exaggerated what happens that term is known as the pes cavus in pes cavus your arches are exaggerated all right and when they're exaggerated, they usually occur due to a contracture of a muscle from above that is causing the summit to be raised even more. So this occurs in the case of poliomyelitis or it can also occur in spina bifida. Pes cavus can also form claw foot. Now claw foot is obviously going to be with pes cavus exaggeration of the arches plus there will be at the metatarsophalangeal joint, there will be extension and in the interphalangeal joint, flexion, claw foot. Now let's talk about the terms talipes. Now talipes equinus, talipes calcaneus. Now first let's talk about calcaneus because it's quite easy. Calcaneus means something is resting on the calcaneus bone. So the people that come to you with the deformity that they are walking on their heel. So they'll be walking like that. So if they're walking on their heel, it is known as talipes calcaneus, walking on heel. Talipes equinus is if the person comes opposite it, he is walking on his toes or he is walking in plantar flexion. This is walking in dorsiflexion, all right? So these are deformities that can occur, uh, congenitally required, all right? Then there is a deformity called talipes varus. In talipes varus, the person will walk on his outer border of the foot. They will walk literally like that, all right? Their outer border will be or lateral border will be on the ground and they will be walking and the talpies this is when the inner border of the foot is going to be they're going to be walking on the inner border or in an inverted posture all right so normally these deformities of the foot occur in combinations and the most common combination is the club foot where the talipes equinus and talipes varus occur together so the person is walking in plantar flexion and is walking in inversion. So inversion and plantar flexion together. The person will literally walk like that, all right? So this is talipes equinovarus, very important club foot, talipes equinovarus. Another combination that occurs is the talipes calcaneovalcus. However, this is more common, all right? So that was all we needed to know about the clinicals of the arches. I really hope you understood the arches of the foot topic. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.